F chord. The Sugar Plum Fairy. Arrange for two cellos. This is your practice video. So let's get right to it. I'm using my electric cello to demonstrate some of these fingerings for you in the tenor clef or clédute. Let's start here in the top line in the fifth measure top part, right here. We start in the fourth position, G. And then we shift to the lower third position, D sharp, E, D. Uh, just a quick reminder, this is the first position on my electric cello here, three dots, and there, fourth finger, first position. And the three dots here is the beginning of the fourth position. These three dots right here are the harmonic. So you will usually play that like that. So to give you a reference, okay? All right, since we're both on the same page. Let's go here again. G, E, G, F sharp. And keep the bow nice and light when you do this. Nice spiccato. And then shifting to the lower third position, D sharp, E, D. And then first position, C sharp, C natural. And the next measure, measure eight, you can either shift up, do the extension, which is the technically easiest to do, but if you simply are having a big challenge with your extensions, you can shift to the fourth position here. Go three, one, four, one, three. It's just a lot of string crossing, and it's actually a little more difficult. So if you see the bow right here, it's just a little harder than, than that right there. So I suggest you learn. You extend, you play your one, you open your hand into an extended position, extended second position. Remain there for three notes, E, C natural, E, and then shift back. My counsel is keep your hand open prior to making that. So play the B. Open your hand, shift into the extension, and that will help you. The next measure here, we have a very rare time where we play in the tenor clef, and I've written down the notes right here. This is measure nine. That's a G, E, G, F sharp. And yes, it looks like they occur on the G string, but remember we are in the tenor clef. So follow along. That's a G, E, G, F sharp on the D string, C natural, those are the first six notes, measure 9, 10, 1, fourth position again, half step back, upper third, D sharp, F sharp, E, F sharp, D sharp, and then you will hear this part in the bass. And then you will recapitulate right here. So that's the next part. We're going to play from 13, 14, 15, 16, just like the beginning. One, two, three, four, one. Shift. Shift. Extend. The next part here in measure 17, upper second, E, C sharp, E. D sharp, first position, first position, and then we're going to play the arpeggio here, and you will see in my note right here, notation, you will see this clever little solid bar. And what does that mean? I call it dropping the bar. Dropping the bar, yes. It happens very quick. So you have to have your bow really on the string to play that. Don't lift the bow because that's a big thing about playing this piece. You're contrasted between spiccato and spiccato. You're playing like that. And then you have to put your bow onto the string to play that right there. 
Now, the dropping of the bar slowly. I'm playing two strings, so I drop the bar and it's playing two notes. I play basically the E natural prior to playing it. So when you see that solid black bar in this shit in the, my scores, again, it's this right here. That means to drop, drop the bar. Okay? Drop the bar. Let's start here and then play here, starting in measure 17. One, two, three, four, one. Upper second. First. First. And then, here we go. One. Drop the bar. Okay? At tempo, it will be a lot faster. If you cannot play this at tempo, then all you have to do is play the first beat and of every single note. So, or, so the first beat, if you cannot play that for the recording, just play the B and play the E. Just play those two notes. Scratch these notes if you find it impossible to play. I will demonstrate that right now for you. Again, this is at 104. To give you an example how fast that will go, Okay, one, two, three, four, one, two, seventeen, one. If that's a little too quick for your level, then you can play dum bum one. So you keep in time. It's more important that you keep in time than you try to play the arpeggio. Okay? Let's go on. Continuing to measure 21, take notice we are back in the tenor clef. It's small, but it's here. Here is our tenor clef. All right. Let's play for measure 21. That's going to be from the upper second to the fourth to the upper third. So upper second, C sharp, D sharp, fourth, E, F sharp, G, shifting back E, D sharp. And that's this in the upper third position right here. If you're unfamiliar with these positions, I have videos always explaining these things on my channel. And then continuing, D sharp, E, B, crossing, and then C sharp, B, so C sharp, D, B. So, one, two, shift. One, bum. Cross. Again, one, C sharp, D sharp, shift. E, F sharp, G, E, D sharp. That's a down bow. And then stay there, D sharp, E, B. C sharp, D, B. Now we are here in the back into the bass clef. So play it simply in the bass clef. We have found the 1-3, one, 1-3, three, one, three. One, three in the upper third position, 1 on the C sharp, 3 on the D sharp, then for the first position, 1 on the E natural, 3 on the F sharp, 4 on the G natural, shifting to the, to right here, the half position, 2 minus 1, seems to be one of the most efficient. Let's do this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Remember to feel that beat in between. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Notice those little tick marks in the music signify where the beat lands. And then we have this wonderful part with the triplets. Do not get confused. It's going to be a up bow for the first time and then a down bow for the second time. Okay, so we're going to play this now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And 
that last beat is silent for you. Again, one, two, three. Keep it light. Okay? And then moving forward, we play this and you see something right here. This is a marcato with a tenuto. So it's a longer marcato. It's a marcato. Marcato doesn't necessarily mean accent, it just means marked, it means emphasized, but not necessarily bow, it's bow. It's like continue bow, like that. Bow. Bow. That is more of an accent. I know I'm saying. That's an accent. It kind of. It goes loud and gets quickly soft a little bit, but that's more of a. That right there is more of a marcato when the sound is more consistent. And it needs to be longer. So loud all the way through that. Okay, that's why I chose to use that notation right there. So we're shifting from the first position to the upper third position right here. So D sharp E crossing. And then the next page here, quickly, we're playing the D sharp shifting to fourth position. E, F sharp, and if you think you're dropping a bar right there, I think we are. It's much better to drop a bar. So let's draw our little notation right here above that. There we go, dropping the bar. And then continuing from the drop bar, we are E, F sharp, G, second G, G player one in the sixth position. One on the G, two on the A, and then really land that two, three, like that. The nice peak of everything. If you notice, I haven't put dynamics in this because I want you to experience it and interpret it naturally. As notes get a little bit higher, maybe get a little more present, okay? All right, let's go to the 20, measure 25, measure 25, which is right here, measure 25. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Now with the metronome, it will be a lot easier to imagine. Let's take it down to ninety four just to give us a, a little wiggle room. Okay, from 25. One, two, three, four, one, two, here we go. together let's go back to measure 21 measure 21 is where we start the syncopations right here in the tenor clef measure 21 to measure 32 one two three four one two here we go mm.
Okay? It's coming right together. Let's go back even further, go in in reverse, and let's play from the 13. 13 is this measure right here, 13. So it's the second time we play that, 13. We we'll go right into 13 to measure 32. 1, 2, 3, 13. Here it is, right here. 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, here we go. 1. Extension. Yes, sounding good. Let's go back even further to the very fifth measure, the fifth measure, the first time we play the melody. One, two, three, four, one, two, here we go, one. Shift. Extension. By the way, measure 32 has five beats, okay? <laughs> measure 32 has five beats. From the beginning, from the beginning, okay? And I think if you're ready, let's do that one more time. If you can't do the arpeggio, just do the downbeat, okay? One, from the beginning to measure 32, and then we're gonna play all the way to the end, okay? One, two, three, four, one, two, here we go, one, two, Different here. That's 
upper second first. Okay. That was all at this wonderful speed of 94, which is 10 below. Now, let's play the duet. So I will play my part and you will play your part. This is the practice. I'll give you two rounds of the practice duet. And then I'm going to play the actual speed. And for this, I'm going to change my cello since I'm no longer demonstrating fingering. Okay, new cello. New old cello. Here we go. We'll play the duet now. Follow along in your part. I play the first beat, you play the second beat. Pizzicato, and then you come in arco in measure five. Two measures are free. One, two, three, four. One, two, duet, go. Got it? Okay, that was the free one. Let's do this for real. One, two, three, four, one, two, ready? just take a flavor, take a temperature, and take it to 104. One, two, three, four, one, two, ready. Mm-hmm. 
now. Follow along. Like real musicians, we're going to do this without that thing going on. Now, I'm going to be your metronome. I'm going to silence them. The tick, 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 tock. You're only going to hear... You're only going to hear uh, me, all right? Let's do this. Like real musicians this time. Okay, I have now the click track in my head. I will be your metronome. Let's play this. Are you ready? A one, a two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Just always for good luck, let's just do one more. That was a free one. Here we go. A one, a two. One, two, three, one, two. So it's a four. One, two, three, four, one, two. Yes, those are sugar plums. If you ever wonder what a sugar plum is, those are sugar plums. 
So I really hope that you learned playing that, enjoyed learning that. That's everything. That's all you need to learn the sugar plum cherry. At the sound of the dog, it's the end of the lesson. Ah, at least he was quiet for me.